Hello, everybody. The day of the Lord is nigh at hand. That is Joel 2, 1. Something has been on my heart that I want to share with you because I always think to myself, if I feel a certain way or struggling with things, the word says that we have in common with other brothers and sisters um, the same likeness. And so I thought, okay, I will share this. And if it can encourage even one, um, the Lord is so good and his word always encourages us. But, you know, if you're like me, we know that the rapture is imminent. We know that at any moment, the trumpet is going to sound. We can feel it. We know it. When we spend time with the Lord, he encourages us knowing that it is at any time. Let me check this right here. There we go. All right. And um, the other day I was reading in Ezekiel. I actually had the word um, going in on a, um, a D DVD, CD, and it was playing in Ezekiel. And I dropped everything when it was Ezekiel chapter 7. You know how it's like you know when the Lord is speaking to you. And I dropped everything and I listened. And so that's what this has come from. It's just, this is going to be a very short video probably. But just read Ezekiel chapter 7 um, and 8 also good. But it's talking about, thus saith the Lord God, and evil and only evil, behold, is come. And an end is come. The end is come. It watcheth for thee. Behold, it is come. The time is come. The day of trouble is near. Behold, the day. Behold, it is come. The time is come. The day draweth near. For wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. Blow the trumpet, even to make all ready. But none goeth to the battle, for my wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. That is just some of the scriptures I've highlighted in Ezekiel chapter 7. You know, if you're like me, sometimes it just seems as though we proclaim it and we proclaim it, but who is hearing? And sometimes we do find that we worry too much about what people are thinking of us. That they're just going to think that we are... And we are not of this world. So that is true. Um, but you know, if the devil can't get the remnant, the bride of Christ, to backslide into the world, to sin and turn their back on God, you know what he tries? To diminish our faith. To diminish our confidence. To have us doubt God's word. We either believe it or we don't. I want to choose to believe. So you know what? It's just plain out of obedience that the remnant, the bride of Christ, continues to warn of the freight train of God's wrath that is barreling down on this world, on mankind. That is the truth. And God in his grace and his mercy is trying to sound it out to all that will hear. You know in Ezekiel 33... That we as the bride, as the remnant, as true Christians, we sound the trumpet. We blow the alarm. We warn that the tribulation is coming. That we do not know when. First the rapture will happen. And then after that, the man of lawlessness, the Antichrist, will sign this seven-year covenant with Israel. That is what starts the tribulation, not the rapture. My goodness, as we see the one world government, as we see the, the tribulation, literally the things that are shadowing of it, we aren't in it yet, but the shadows of it, just like Jesus told us we would see, how much sooner is the rapture? Oh, we daresn't grow weary. We have got to sound the alarm. And if you are like me, when you get in your quiet time with the Lord, when you are in his word, he encourages you. You honestly don't care if you're the only one that is proclaiming it. You are not going to doubt his word. You are not going to diminish 
what you know his word says. He is the one proclaiming it and telling us, warning that the end is near. That the evil day is upon us. Shout it. We need to proclaim it so that people will repent to God the Father and turn in faith to the Lord Jesus Christ. We must. To be obedient children, we must. Or else we are being disobedient. We will have allowed, even if it's the millionth and one time that we have proclaimed it, then we proclaim it the millionth and the second and the third and the fourth until the trump sounds and we are out of here and the tribulation will go forth. But we are already seeing the shadow of it. We mustn't grow weary. We have got to warn You know the unbelieving that are all around us. And a lot of them wear a cloak of righteousness. They wear a denomination. They may attend a church building faithfully. But you know they are not of the remnant. You know that they are not born again. Warn them that they have to be born again. Only the born again have the spirit of the living God in them. And that is the tether that yanks us out of here when Jesus Christ returns to get his bride. Is that you? We must examine ourselves. We as believers are to encourage each other. As it says in 1 Thessalonians 4, 14, through 18, encourage one another that the Lord will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, the trump of God, the dead in Christ will rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Oh, how I long for that to never, ever, ever be out of his presence ever. And in verse 18, wherefore comfort one another with these words. That is what the bride has got to be doing with one another. But you know the unbelieving do not have the promise of the rapture. They have got to repent to God, the Father. They have got to repent and have faith to and in Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, or they will not be raptured. In 1 Peter 4, 7, But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch into prayer. That is God having Peter write this. This was 2,000 years ago. I don't want to be a scoffer. This is truth, and we better be proclaiming it. If they hear us, they hear us and repent. But if they don't, it's been documented that they heard And they refused that they don't want to believe. But what do we do? We sound the alarm. We set the trumpet to our mouth and we proclaim what God says. That the end of all things is at hand. That is what God says. That is what his servants repeatedly will proclaim. We will not grow weary. We will not get tired because it is thus thus saith the Lord God Almighty. And he is merciful and gracious to warn. 1 John 2.18, little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that the Antichrist shall come, that Antichrist shall come even now. Are there many Antichrists? And we've seen them. We know who a lot of them are. Whereby we know that it is the last time. Don't fool yourself. Don't believe the scoffers out there that this soon will pass. If they're saying that, they do not believe the word of God. This is all setting up the end days are now nigh at hand right now we are in it at any moment the rapture then the setting up 
of the seven-year tribulation when the Antichrist signs the peace treaty with precious Israel. Ezekiel 7, an end is come, the end is come. It watcheth for thee, behold, it is come. Do we believe it? The time has come, the day of trouble is near. Isaiah 13, 9, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh. Are we proclaiming that? We must remember, it is God that says it. Not us. It is God that says it is near. That it is here. And we must proclaim it as his servants. We are to be obedient children to him. And proclaim it. If they hear and repent, their soul will be saved. If not, they have at least heard. And God in his mercy and grace has warned. In Luke 8, 17. For nothing, is, nothing in secret that shall not be made manifest. Neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Everything is going to be exposed. Do we believe? Are we proclaiming? Don't grow weary, saints. It'll all be worth it. Hebrews 3, 12, 13, 12 and 13. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. See? If the enemy can't get us to sin in backsliding into the world, he'll give us unbelief. And that is an abominable sin to God. He wants his children to believe him, to believe what his word says. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily. Where it is called, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Guys, unbelief is sin. Let us not have a heart of unbelief. Dear Lord, take away doubt. You know that we are guilty of it, it creeps in on us. Oh, Father, I confess it to you, and I pray that you would magnify your word to me, to all those that would be listening to this. Increase our faith. faith. Forgive us our, of unbelief, Father. Loose our tongues to proclaim your word even more to the glory of King Jesus. Father, your word says it, so it is, and may we proclaim it to your glory, that, Father, the wrath of you is coming and it is nigh at hand and you want those warned. May they listen. May we proclaim it. Father, if any not do not know you that would be watching this, Father, give them a heart to believe. Give them a heart to repent unto you that they would get born again by the Spirit of the living God. May they feel your presence. May the, the fear of you draw us to not sin against you and be washed in the blood of Jesus. Father, be glorified and uplifted in everyone that would listen to this. And I thank you for each one of them. There might not be many, but each one will have been sent by you to hear this. And I pray your precious blessing upon each one. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless each and every one of you.